Good day. This is December 5th, 2011. This is Dr. Conrad Miller reporting to you on a new Fukushima update. They just told us in the New York Times that they have leaked another 45 tons of highly radioactive water, mostly strontium, a million times higher than it should be. And that, a lot of that will go into the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, which we have to worry about poisoning forever with all this radioactivity being dumped into the ocean. The rivers are all polluted around Fukushima. They have about 50 billion becquerels that are going into the ocean every day. And the overall contamination just from cesium, which is like potassium and can get into all your lung, your cells rather, and uh, can poison all your tissues. Uh, we have about 50 billion becquerels per hour per day that's being released overall. In the air, there's 20 billion becquerels per day being released as steam from the Fukushima plant. They're trying to put up a tent over these fuel pools to catch the steam, and also they're trying to build a retaining wall that'll block the flow of all this leakage into the ocean. There's thousands of tons of radioactive water in the basements of these reactors as noted in the article in the Times yesterday. And we know that there are meltdowns in the reactors one through three, uh, to within one foot of the steel plate through the concrete. And this last part of the, con the uh, containment is the steel, which is only really one and a half inches thick, one and a half inches. So once that goes through, then you'll have the China syndrome, which probably will occur, even if they do get these reactors under control because they really won't be able to really get everything cleared for at least 30 years. They're talking about a cold shutdown. What's a cold shutdown? Is it cold and icy? No, it's just below boiling temperature of water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees centigrade water, and they still haven't gotten to that yet. So these reactions keep going on inside of the uh, melted down reactors and in the fuel pools uh, where those get critical every once in a while and the temperatures go too high once the water doesn't cover the fuel assemblies that are in there. That's where they put, put the ones that are too radioactive to use anymore. And they have about seven f fuel pools at Fukushima. Number four is the one you worry about. So these things are all going on and this, all this radioactivity is getting into the Pacific Ocean, into the food chain. And then you got to worry about the walruses and the whales that are detected detect the cesium in the whales, some of the whales, and that's going to continue and get worse. The, the models that the uh, nuclear industry and the NRC and so on have used apparently are incorrect because 90% of the uh, cesium, for example, is not dissolved. It's suspended on particles that are falling onto orgas organisms on the bottom of the oceans and the rivers and the animals and the plants are going to pick those up. So this is all happening, and uh, there still could be hydrogen explosions inside those reactors one through three. So this is uh, still a very critical situation there. And um, another thing that's happened, just in case you didn't know, is that, uh, for example, there was this uh, fellow. His name was Nori Kazu Otsuka. And he was a TV person who was in Fukushima on the 15th of March, four days after the accident. And then he continued to eat products from Fukushima, just to show you that nothing could happen. And now he's just developed acute lymphocytic leukemia. Now, it was from Fukushima, and what he ate, we can't really prove it, but there's only 1.5 cases in men his age um, and 100,000 people that get that acute lymphocytic leukemia. And then another young fellow who was doing the same thing with fish, he was only 23, Abe Hiro, Hiroto, Abe Hiroto, he also died from the same disease, acute lymphocytic leukemia at the age of 23. And then the director of the plant just had to go into the hospital, and we don't know what happened to him. They're not revealing that. That happened last week. And remember that the man who was in charge of the cleanup at Chernobyl, Vladimir Chernysenko, he was a physicist. He developed cancer and died from that. 
and he attributed it to what he was doing at Chernobyl. So things don't look so good. We probably poisoned the Pacific Ocean. To what degree we have to determine yet. We have to figure out how much actually went in there into the Pacific Ocean and still going in there. And just remember that when you swim in the Pacific Ocean and you have plutonium in there, for example, it only takes a millionth of a gram to cause lung cancer. It would take 10, 20, 30 years to develop. But you can get that by just inhaling it into your lung, for example, from getting it in the water. But the walruses can do it, and, it can happen to, and things can happen to the fish. And then there are other radionuclides and the strontium I mentioned. That uh, concentrates, it acts like bone, like um, uh, calcium, and it's taken up by bone. And then you can get by the bone marrow and irradiate the cells where the bone marrow makes the uh, new blood cells, and those can become leukemic too. So this is all not very good. And uh, we'll talk about the uh, next time I talk to you, we'll do a little thing about what's happened with the culture and why this continues to go on in, in Japan and why it's been going on for so long because of corruption and appointments as vice presidents to TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric uh, Company that's responsible for this debacle that's still going on in Fukushima. This is Dr. Conrad Miller, signing off. Speak to you next time.